I will say this. Sometimes it pays off to be a little patient. Sometimes it pays off to ride out the early struggles of your young yet promising quarterback. Because if you're too quick to react to what you see initially, it might cloud your view of the much bigger, larger, more important picture. Now, there's no question for the Bills, if you look at 2018, 2019, you probably had some sizable to significant concerns about Josh Allen. I did not have quite so many, but to be clear, like let's call out the bias as it is. Like He was my QB1 in the 2018 draft. I was going to be a little more prone to defending him, a little more prone to being patient with him. Because you look at the physical tools and the athletic upside and you say, if he can piece it together, this guy has elite level quarterback talent. So you might have to play it out a little bit. You might have to let it ride a little bit. You may have to redefine what accuracy looks like with a guy like him because you know he's a little bit closer to a... Um, Cam Newton type of guy, where with that big arm talent, that big playability, you're not always concerned with them being able to complete 65 to 70 percent of his passes because you want the ability to make the big plays. You want the game changing, momentum changing type of plays that a Josh Allen could produce in the offense. And the first two years of his career, you saw some of those, but you saw plenty of other backbreaking things and maddeningly frustrating lack of accuracy on basic fundamental throws. But man, 2020 was a bit of a different story. 2020 was Josh Allen's real coming out party. Josh Allen showed in 2020 that he's the right dude for Buffalo. He showed that he's that type of talent. He showed that he could be an elite quarterback in the league. I'd argue had almost as good of a case as anybody to be the National Football League's most valuable player last season. Like No disrespect to Aaron Rodgers or other guys, uh, but Josh Allen's season was that good. It was that legit. You could have made a case, and I think I made a bit of a case as to why I might have voted for him. Either way, even though you look at the playoffs or the Bills and you say, hey, you made it to the AFC Championship game, that maybe didn't turn out as well as you would have liked. You fell a game short of the Super Bowl. You got to be feeling really good about yourself, though, because you're a team that feels like it's on the cusp, on the precipice. The young quarterback that you've been waiting and hoping could be the dude showed last year that he not only can be that dude, but he is that dude, and now all of a sudden, you're going into this season with expectations. You're going into this season with people looking to you to saying, are you the ones that can knock the Chiefs off the pedestal in the AFC? Are you the ones that can go and take on a Tampa or somebody else in the Super Bowl and win it? Can you end the misery for that long-suffering Buffalo Bills fan base and Scott Norwood, why, all that other shit. You know what I mean. So... Yeah, it's much different talking about the Bills this time. And even the drama and the saga with Cole Beasley's ignorant ass. And let's be clear, it is ignorant. You can question certain things, and that is fine. And I want to, I want to be clear, like there's absolutely nothing wrong with questioning certain things. Absolutely not. We, we kind of suppress questioning in our society, creating this mindset of, you need to just go with the status quo. You need to go with what you're told to do. And that is dangerous. And I don't think we should encourage that type of behavior, although we very often do, and frankly, regardless of political spectrum or beliefs. But, like, you look at a guy like him and his representative of others within the NFL and you say, is your almost, like, militantly defiant stance worth it? I'm not even talking about effectiveness of COVID vaccines. I'm not even talking about whether that's the right thing to do or not. I'm not even trying to talk about like mandates or not. Like, let's even take a step back and just think about the simple matter of somebody like him. Are you really worry, willing to lose games, lose money because of this? Potentially cost your team? I don't know, man. But I don't know that that is such a big distraction that it's really worth talking about anymore. It probably got a lot more attention during the offseason when we were bored and looking for things to talk about than it was really going to matter at the end of the day. Um, the Buffalo Bills come into this 2021 campaign to me, certainly on paper, the team most logically well-equipped to dethrone the Kansas City Chiefs 
in the AFC and with a very, very good chance to do so. Uh, when you look at their draft, I don't know how much in terms of initial individual contributions they're going to get guys from guys like Gregory Rousseau and Carlos Basham and Spencer Brown in year one. You know, that feels like more of your gambling on upside in trades, especially those first two picks, talking about your pass rush, which needed some upgrading, that's for sure. Um, how much of that is really going to pay off immediately? Maybe you're hoping that these guys get into the flow of it during the year and they become impact players in the playoffs, where that is certainly probably going to make a very big difference. When you look at this team on paper, though, it's a pretty good roster. You know, offensively, obviously, it starts with Josh Allen. He played at an MVP level last year. Uh, you're talking about him being thought of as a top five quarterback in the league now. Took a little time for you to see it, but now that you've seen it, you see just how special this guy can really be. Then you throw in guys like Stephon Diggs and so forth. His receiving core is pretty good. Um, is it the best in the league? No. But he's got some weapons around him. He's got some guys that can make plays happen. And that's what you want to do. You take a young quarterback with big-time physical tools and you give them guys that can make plays for him and make him look good. And defensively, that secondary, you know, Tredavious White obviously is the anchor, the linchpin there. He does so many good things. Um, but that secondary in general is really good. When I look at the question marks, like running game, when you look at Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, is that a backfield that you really trust in big game spots? Is there enough talent there at the running back position? Now, Josh Allen adds another layer to your running game. He adds another dynamic, so that can mask for some of that. But I'm just not sure that I'm completely sold that Devin Singletary, Zach Moss is a type of one-two combination um, that you find ideal. The one-two combination that you think that will take enough pressure off of Josh Allen, provide enough balance to that offense that you can win a Super Bowl with them. They could prove to be this year, but at the moment, I'm not so sure. Their offensive line, you know, obviously you look and the primary purpose and point of them is to protect Josh Allen. And you've got to make sure that they do that all year. Um, we'll see how well they're able to do so. Their pass rush, as I mentioned, drafting Rousseau, drafting Basham. This is a team that was looking to upgrade their defensive front because they knew it needed to get better. Like when you couldn't really get pressure on Patrick Mahomes in the AFC Championship game, you were fucked for all intents and purposes. So for as good of a balanced roster that this is, you know, this is a team that you look at, you bring in a Russo, you're hoping guys like him and Ed Oliver play to that high draft status, that high draft profile, because if they do, then that takes that front four to another level. That makes the job easier for the secondary. It makes this Bills team really, really hard to beat. When I look at the Bills' schedule, two blocks of games really stands out to me. Start off at the beginning of the year, the first six weeks. They host Pittsburgh, go to Miami, host Washington, host Houston, at Kansas City, at Tennessee. So there's this kind of interesting look here in saying Pittsburgh and Miami were double-digit win teams last year. Pittsburgh was a playoff team. Those are your first two opponents, one at home, one on the road. Then you've got week three, a division-winning playoff team with a losing record last year in Washington, but still, can't take them lightly. Then you're hosting Houston, which better be a goddamn givey. And then you've got to go to Kansas City and to Tennessee, two playoff teams from the past couple of years, the Chiefs obviously being the two-time defending AFC champions you know, and Super Bowl champions in the 2019 season. You look at the Bills and you say, kind of like the benchmark here, is you want to be no worse than 4-2. and two. You'd love to be 5-1 and one in that first six games. If you want to be a real contender, you want to be a real threat to potentially usurp the Chiefs in the AFC, to do that, you've got to go 5-1 and one in this stretch. 4-2 and two you can maybe get by with, but 5-1 and one has got to be the target. 5-1 and one is ideal. Because one of the things you potentially want to do is you want to be able to win enough games to be able to get home field advantage throughout the playoffs so that way the road to the Super Bowl in the AFC goes through Buffalo not Kansas City or any damn where else winning some of these games early in the year is a big part of that then you look at the end of the season the last four weeks hosting Carolina at New England Atlanta the Jets you know like a couple division games there but all four of those games would certainly feel winnable for the Bills they're going to want to make sure that they handle business in those games, especially with three of the four, last four at home. You know, those games could make all the difference in terms of not so much just winning the AFC East, but you know, really cementing their place in terms of playoff seeding and their 
kind of pursued their quest to have the road to the Super Bowl go through Buffalo this year. I like this Buffalo team and its construction quite a bit. I mean, obviously, it makes a big, big, huge difference when you've got a franchise guy and damn near elite guy, basically an elite guy based off of what he showed last year in Josh Allen. It changes the dynamics of so much of this team. It makes them a real contender. It makes them a real threat. I look at them and I say, there's a clear distinction to me, at least on paper right now, between them and the Miami, and then obviously the Patriots and the Jets. But they're the clear favorites in this division. They're the clear favorites to be the team most likely to usurp and overtake the Kansas City Chiefs in 2021 in the AFC. I think they'll win at least 12 games this year in the regular season. Certainly win this division. Wouldn't be surprised to see them end up with the number one seed. And if they do, they're going to be dangerous and a real problem for everybody in that conference.